Hey, how's it going? So you may have heard of this natural phenomenon that sometimes happens called an evolutionary arms race. What this is is when two competing species evolve alongside one another, they will often evolve characteristics or counter-evolve in response to the other species. The common example people like to use of this is cheetahs and gazelles. You might have heard before, but cheetahs are kind of fast. In fact, they're really, really fast. In short bursts, they can run up to 70 miles per hour, which in most cases, in most places of the world, that would be overkill on a massive scale. Unless, of course, you're trying to hunt a Thompson's gazelle. Thompson's gazelles can run nearly as fast as cheetahs, maxing out around 50 to 60 miles per hour, and they can sustain that speed for much longer periods of time. These are two species built for exactly one thing speed. Now, cheetahs and gazelles being able to run at these incredibly fast speeds is no fluke of nature. If the cheetahs are unable to catch the gazelles, they starve, and if the gazelles are unable to escape the cheetahs, they get eaten. The result of this is that only the fastest among the cheetahs and gazelles live long enough to reproduce. That's what we call selection pressure, generation after generation of only the fastest and strongest reproducing, evolution does its thing, and we wind up with some very, very fast animals. So that's the usual case, and that's all well and good, but what I think is really interesting is how how we, the human race, have suddenly found ourselves in the middle of not just one, but two evolutionary arms races. Now luckily, we aren't in an evolutionary battle like the cheetah and gazelle that is about predation. Flaming hot cheetos are thankfully just as slow and easy to catch as ever, but we are in a sort of evolutionary race about food. You see, we've become very, very good at growing food. Take a look at this chart of corn bushels per acre in the United States. Whereas in 1930, a farmer could expect about 30 bushels of corn per acre, now that number is as high as 160 bushels per acre. That's a lot, and it's due to a number of scientific advances that have taken place over that time period, including better fertilizer, better farming practices, and of course, the use of hybridized and genetically modified crops. Some people really don't like genetically modified crops, and of course some of their concerns are legitimate, but the benefits are clearly substantial. Crops can be genetically modified to be more nutritious, faster growing, more resistant to drought and changes in weather. It's very useful. However, more recently we are seeing one major downside. You see, we are now able to make crops that resist herbicides like glyphosate, which is in Roundup. What this does is it allows farmers to use herbicides to get rid of harmful weeds without worrying about damaging their cash crops. Seems good to me, right? Let's do it. The problem here is that while humans are very smart and can make plants that resist certain chemicals, nature can do the same thing and make weeds that are resistant to herbicides. Farmers still need these new super weeds gone, so they use more and more Roundup, causing the plants to become increasingly more resistant. Suddenly, we've got an evolutionary arms race. Only the most resistant of the weeds survive to reproduce, creating an evolutionary incentive for resistance, and we, like the cheetah, still need to remove the weeds to eat and so we must use increasing potencies and quantities of weed killer. It's become an escalating race against nature, and there is no easy way out. There's a similar situation taking place right now in the field of medicine. Antibiotics are so prevalent in our world now that we're beginning to see new strands of bacteria that are resistant to one or more types of antibiotics. These superbugs can resist multiple types of antibiotics, making them incredibly difficult to deal with and potentially deadly. This means that we have to outpace their capacity for developing resistance with new treatments and medicine. It's not an easy task. We as humans are an incredibly successful species because we've been so effective at controlling the world around us. And that's good. I hope we continue to increase our survivability and sustainability as a species, but it's always important to remember that sometimes nature is going to bite back. I'll see you next week. I'd be in the corner of the first and I'd say the most powerful and influential woman pharaoh. Hatshepsut. And then he came over again and said, after the show, do you want to meet Mac no more? And I said, yes.